though I wake to a world with more questions than answers, where dissonant voices ignite division, my heart will stand firm in this decision. I choose thankful. Though I walk through a landscape that is uncharted and foreign, where the once familiar seems lost and forgotten, I will remember that nothing is unexpected to my Father in heaven, and I choose thankful. Though I live each day uncertain of tomorrow, I will accept that tomorrow was never certain and cherish every chance to witness the wonder of creation. I choose thankful. I choose faith in what is unseen, hope for a future beyond the adversity, love spoken despite animosity. I choose to believe. And though the struggles I face may be painful, though it sometimes seems impossible, though I fall a thousand times covered in the dust of failure, I am able to rise. Not because I am strong, not because life is perfect, but because in all circumstances, Jesus lives. When this world stands perplexed and demands I give a reason for the hope that I have, I can only say that in Jesus' name, I choose thankful. It's not a simple choice. It's not an easy choice, but it is the only choice that brings calm in the storm. Not by my power, but through the strength of Christ alone. I choose thankful.
be fine if, we, if it was for me, but we're talking about the high, most high God, hallelujah, who, who woke you up this morning and started you on your way, hallelujah. It wasn't your alarm clock. It was another day of grace, another day of mercy. So give him praise for it, hallelujah. I don't care how you praise him, just give him what he's due, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You could be one praise, one worship from your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Uh, hold on, hold on. Let's start. Maybe, maybe, maybe we need to start this off again. Maybe we need to, If we was at a football game, you would give him, your team more praise than you're doing right now. Hallelujah. But we're talking about God right now, okay? So give him what he's due. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I don't care if you got to stomp your feet, clap your hands, whatever your praise is, give him what he's due. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know what you've gone through this week, but you're here today. So that's praiseworthy. Hallelujah. You can need to th thank him for the small things so you can be blessed for the big things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. How do you follow up with that with more praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's keep praising God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've been blessed to give the word this morning. The word's going to come out of 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm going to look at verse 8. And what this came to me in the spirit. It's like we know that there's a lot of crazy things going on in the world today. Um, especially, you know, wars are breaking out everywhere, it seems like. Uh, violence is just there. But we know that the answer is, is that love conquers all, and God is love, right? Hallelujah. So oh, verse, uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8 reads, it says, Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord, it is blessed. Let's put a hand together for the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for today, Lord God. We thank you that we're able to come into your house again today, Father God, to get a word from you, Lord, that we can take out and, and spread in the communities, Father God, and, and reach those that, that don't know you, Father God. Lord, I pray for those on their way here that... Nothing will get in their way. Nothing will hinder them from coming, Lord God. We pray right now for those that are broken, Lord, that just need answers, Father God, that need relief, that need release, God. We pray right now for those people right now, Lord God, whether they be here in TV land or just in, in contact, that we come, come into contact with people, Father God. We pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that everything that is broken would just fall off, Father God, and, and, and just mend their hearts, Father God. Mend their whatever situation it is that they're in, Father God. And we give you praise and we give you honor, Father God. It's in your precious Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's in Jesus' name we pray. It's in Jesus' name that we live. It's in Jesus' name that we breathe. Hallelujah. It's in Jesus' name that we have our being. Glory to God. It's a beautiful day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice glad in it. It doesn't matter how we feel. God is always worthy of praise. Hallelujah. We don't let the world know this morning that we serve a good God who is worthy of glory, who is worthy of honor. Hallelujah. So if you don't mind, you can clap your hands. Glory to God. You can wave them. You can acknowledge the presence of God in the way that you like. But all we know today is he's worthy of it all. Glory to God. Oh, clap those hands, somebody. Oh, 
your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. If it had not been for you on our side, we would have been swallowed up. So we thank you that we survived the week. We thank you that you woke us up this morning, oh God. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. And we give you all the praise, God. We have come together as a corporate body to fellowship, yes, God, but to send adoration your way because we know, Lord God, that we could not make it through life without you. Hallelujah. We lift up a sound of worship in your presence today. We ask, Lord God, that you would just envelop this building with your presence. Allow anything that's not like you to be driven away in the name of Jesus. We receive your peace and your joy in the name of Jesus in this place. Glory to God. Whoever stands in need of forgiveness or healing or whatever it may be, we know it's found in your presence, God. And so we believe we receive today in Jesus' name. is the sound to say that I love you, the sound to show that I'm grateful, the sound of surrender. Can you say this is the sound? This is the sound to say, to say that I love you, the sound.
surrender. Right from your heart, tell them this is the sound. This is the sound to say, to say that I love you. The sound. Just to show how grateful I am. Show that I'm grateful. It's the sound of Hallelujah. surrender. What's so important about the sound is your daddy knows your voice. Come on, this is the sound. This is the sound. To say I love you, God. Say that I love you. of surrender lift those hands in this breath of somebody this is the sound to say that I love you sound to show that I'm grateful the sound of surrender oh come on and surrender our worship to him you gotta come up out of yourself it's not about us, it's all about him. Hallelujah, we serve a mighty God. We serve an all-powerful God. We serve an ever-present God in our time of need. Glory to God. We love you, Lord. We lift up your name in the sanctuary. Move by your spirit in this place today, God. Heal heavy hearts. Be the lifter of heads in the house today. In the name of Jesus, we honor you, Lord. We give you praise. Take that pivot. 
the problem ain't going nowhere. But sometimes it's us that needs a break. You ever had, have you ever had to take a break from somebody before and just not talk to them for a little while? Some of us need to treat the problem like a person we're trying to just take a break from. Amen. Worship is how you take a pivot. And we need to talk to God for a little while and less with the problem. Hallelujah. Listen, let's, let's collectively make, make a pivot in this place in Jesus' name. And let's give our most high God a worship. Let's give him a praise. Let's give him something. Give him a sound. Thank you for the pivot that's happening in the spirit in Jesus' name. Where we take a 180 and turn our back to the problem, oh God. Because we know, oh God, if the problem hasn't taken us out by now, it does not stand a chance. And we thank you, oh God. We thank you for the pivot. We thank you, Lord God. We'll spend, we'll spend time praising you right here, right now. We'll spend time worshiping you right here, right now, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God. We know you've got, you've got the problem. We don't have to handle the problem. You will handle the problem, oh God. So we will, we will worship the problem solver, oh God, and not the problem. Hallelujah. We thank you, oh God, for the pivot, for the spiritual pivot in Jesus' name. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, make a sound. Make a sound. Hallelujah. Make a sound. Hallelujah. Make a sound. Hallelujah. 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 Just for a few more moments. Just for a few moments. Let's worship God just for a few more moments. Hallelujah. We're so grateful. We're so grateful, oh God. Heal, deliver, and set free in this place today, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that the troubles, that the trials, that the hardships would just fall off of us in Jesus' name, in your presence, oh God. Just like in your word, when Peter was in prison and the shackles just fell off of him, we thank you for falling off in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. Sickness would just fall off of us in your presence here in Jesus' name. Anything that has held us, that has bound us, oh God, we thank you, Lord God, that in your presence here today, it would just fall off of us in Jesus' name, Lord God. We thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for a turning, for a pivot in this place today. Shift our perspective, oh God. Wash us fresh and new in your presence, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that there is none like you. In Jesus' name, amen. One more time, make a sound, make a sound, make a sound, make a sound, make a sound. Hallelujah. There is no one like our most high God. Hallelujah. Your answer is in the house today. Your answer is here today. I don't know someone who's been toiling, who's been struggling. Your answer is in this place today. Amen. Expect God's glory. Hallelujah. God is going to meet you at, at the level of your expectations. Amen. So what are you saying, Elder Chris? Get your expectations up. Get your expectations up this morning. God's going to meet you at the level of of your expectations. Amen. For those who don't know, my name is Elder Chris Parks. Amen. <laughs> I just want to welcome everyone who is here, everyone who is connected virtually to the Upper Room Christian Cathedral. We are celebrating God's family reunion. Can you just do me a favor and celebrate your neighbor? Amen. On either side of you. Amen. Front, back, side to side. We thank God. 
for everyone who is here today. Amen. Amen. Can we just give a, a, a hand clap amen to our praise team who brought us into the presence of God this morning through song. Amen. We thank God. Amen. But then we thank God for Ante. We thank God for Bud. Amen. We thank God for them. Amen. If there are any first time guests, if this is your very first time at the upper room, could you just please stand to your feet? We don't want to make it feel weird. We just want to make it feel welcome. Amen. If this is your very first time. Amen. Amen. We got some first time guests. Amen. Someone should be extending a hand, a hug. Amen. Just welcoming you. Amen. Properly. We just, we thank God for you. Amen. Out of all the places you could have gone, God brought you here. And we, we don't count that as an accident. We don't call that an incident. We call that God's divine purpose. And we thank you for being a contributor of this worship experience. It would not be the same if you were not here. Amen. So, room, let's convey a blessing over our guests. They're so glad you came. Worship wouldn't be the same. Please come again. One more time for our first time. Yes. Amen. As Pastor has said, time after time after time, the upper room can be habit forming. Amen. Our first and second and, and third time. Yes. Full fifth, six. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. So let's put hands, feet, arms, and elbows into motion. Find two or three people you didn't come in with and just greet them with the love of Jesus Christ. We call it great grace. Upper room. Let's lead off.
the daughter of a survivor of breast cancer, amen. And that influenced me now at an early age in my 30s to start making sure and taking tests rather than waiting to the recommended time. Amen. So I praise God for that. Yes. And I know I did see some pictures posted from the Thursday night, ladies night out. Yes, that was wonderful. Wonderful. So yes, please be aware and keep both of those in your prayers and lift it up and supporting those areas. Amen. On this Wednesday, we do have our soul food Bible study. Amen. At 730. Be there, be there, be there. I also want to make note, save the date for October 29th. Can you do that? Save the date. I'm sorry. That's supposed to be repeat after me. I didn't say it. <laughs> but anyway, save the date. Well, just to let you know, if you don't know, October is Clergy Awareness um, Appreciation Month. I'm sorry, I'm stuck in the awareness. And that is a time set aside to recognize the contributions and service of pastors, priests, reverends, ministers, and all other clergy members. Here at The Room, we not only recognize our pastor and first lady, our pastor, I should say, and the various ministers, but we also recognize our deacons and their spouses. Amen? Because they wouldn't be able to serve freely unless the spouse served along with them. I mean, even though we may not see them, they might not have an official title, but they are serving also. So here at the room, we do celebrate both. So during this month, we will have a display so you can see all their wonderful cheesy pictures <laughs> and be able to take time this month just to send a note of encouragement. Just thanking them, encouraging them, giving them sentiments uh, for their service to the um, this body of believers in the kingdom. Amen. And on the 29th, we're going to set aside and do something celebratory to honor them. And we want you all to be a part of that. So the display will go up. You will see that next Sunday for the next two Sundays. You can freely bring your notes and gifts and sentiments. And then on the fifth Sunday, yes, it was five Sundays this month, we're going to celebrate. Amen. Amen. So more details will be in your insert. So please keep all the news in mind. And for Pastor's Marinate Moment, the discipline to serve opens us up to more of the kingdom. Let me read that again. Excuse me. The discipline to serve opens us up to more of the kingdom than the decision to just surrender. Okay? The discipline to serve opens us up to more of the kingdom than just the decision to just surrender. In our truth from the Bible, y'all, God must be talking to us. We're still in discipleship. Discipline and discipleship. God is saying something to this house. Amen. So please keep all the news in mind. I'm for Pastors Mary. Oh, I already said that. Excuse me. So this is Karen Burrell with the what? Thank you. It's okay to hear the marinate moment twice. Sometimes it's got to sink in. Amen. Amen. It's offering time, y'all. Time and offering time. Y'all heard them yelling. They, we love it in the upper room when it's our opportunity to give back, put the Lord back in his rightful place through our giving. I'm going to say it again. It is time and offering time. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's, let me go ahead and remind you of a few ways that you can give here at the upper room. Of course, we thank you. We are blessed because of your consistent and faithful giving. So we uh, give via text message so you can give uh, by by typing the word G-I-V-E into your cell phone. You can do that now, 703-884-8722 um, and you will get a link back in your phone and there you can click that link. Designate your giving. It would be received securely. Also from your phone, you can go to our website, uh, www.urcc.org backslash donate. There's a link there. You can set up your giving in that way. Um, we're trying to make it don donating very easy of course uh, because of COVID, we come up with a number of other ways. And so uh, PayPal, we've been using that for quite some time. You can go to the PayPal app or paypal.com. Use our email, set up your giving in that way. All of that is received securely. And of course, if you're here this morning, you're not comfortable giving that way, you can slip up your hand. We can give you an envelope. Miss Claudette is on this end. Miss Florence is on this end. Slip up your hand. We can get you guys an envelope and you can go ahead and write a check, put some cash in there, whatever your desire. And if you don't 
have anything to give on today, that's all right. Uh, we'll continue to pray for you and, and allow God to just use you on next time in a larger territory. So, upper room, y'all ready? You know what's next. We like to do our tithe and offering declaration to our guests. These are some things that we are believing God for. We have seen God bless this house, bless our individual families, those connected to us with these things. So we shout those things out that we're believing God for. Isn't that right, upper room? Upper room. Y'all already know. Let's do it together. Look to your screen, to you at home. You know the drill. One, two, three. As I tithe and give offerings cheerfully, I am believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs. That's it. Benefits. Favorable settlements. This is it. Unexpected income. Supernatural debt cancellation. Rebates and returns. Discounts and dividends. Checks in the mail. That's it. Bills to decrease. Blessings and increase. I declare in the name of Jesus that debt and lack are here now dissolved and done away with forever. That's it. Worldwide. Yeah. Don't sleep on them rebates and returns. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and lift up your hearts, your phones. We're going to pray a blessing. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We don't take it lightly, Lord, that we have the opportunity to give, oh God. But we're praying that even if we can't give today, Lord, that you can allow us to be able to sow in a manner next time, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you would take this seed that we sow and use it to advance the kingdom. Every church that is open in your name, use it for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray, we thank you, we love you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All righty. We're going to continue this atmosphere of worship. Corral is going to come on up. We're going to bless you all in song. We are here this morning to reverence our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. To call him the names that he is. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He's the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. The Prince of Peace. Amen. 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 He's keeping our minds at peace. No matter what it looks like or feels like, he's keeping our minds stayed on him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just love the Lord. Glory to God. Don't think that he was good, y'all. Thank you. 
give God a hand of praise if you believe he's a holy one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 That's my jam right there. If y'all if y'all see me on the road, I'm just just say he alright. He listens to the holy one right there. That's my jam right there. He is the holy one. Amen. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. And beside him there is none other. Amen. Amen. Let's do our Bible affirmation. Amen. Let's listen. Hallelujah. Let's get into this. Amen. See, when you set an atmosphere, you set expectation. This reminds me of this. This is remind me. This may be the expect. This may be the atmosphere that that woman with the issue of blood had. So I don't care who's in front of me. I know that if I if I get close enough. You gotta be determined enough. Listen, I didn't come here for you. I came, I came here for the Lord. I came to touch Him. If I may but touch. Father, we came to touch you today. We came to be touched by you. We, we, we thank you for our brothers and our sisters that are here with us today, God. But we didn't come for them respectfully. We came for you, God. So we ask you now to speak to our hearts, Holy Spirit. We thank you, God, for preparing for preparing that heart to receive your word. We thank you for ministering and warring angels right now that are standing guard and watching over us. As your word says, watching over your word to perform it. Hallelujah. So we receive the word right now with gladness. We thank you, God, for its impending work in our life. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for this atmosphere. We thank you for the expectation right now, God. To see you in a new and a living way. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Come on, let's do our Bible affirmation. Ready? Let's go. This is my Bible. It is the infallible, incorruptible, unstoppable, immutable word of God. It holds my peace, my victory, my breakthrough. This is my spiritual roadmap. This is my Bible. You believe that? Give God a shout. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Look at your name and say, neighbor, are you ready to receive? Amen, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Amen. Woo. I felt, I felt what y'all felt. Oh, man, this is, God is here. God is here. God is here. Praise the Lord. We're going to get right into this thing. We're going to get right into this thing. And we've been talking about nine weeks. For nine weeks, over nine weeks, we've been talking about um, just, before I get started, this Friday, this Friday, this Friday, we got men's, mighty men of valor, our, our men's fellowship, our men's fellowship, amen, amen. Hey, thank you, sir. We're going to be here. Mighty men of valor, come on, men's fellowship. We, it's this Friday, this Friday. Um, here's, what I, here, here's what I know. People do what they want to do. There been some folks, let me know about it, let me know about it. We're letting you know about it, and you still won't come. But that's okay. We're going we gonna to do it without you. You're just going to miss. That's, I'm, just, I'm just trying to help you out. You, I want you to be a part. If you're a part of this house and what God is doing in the house, it means there's something there for you. Amen. Teach your own, Pastor Radford. So it's, it's important. It's important. We, we, we don't need you here to do it, but... It's done because you're here. This Friday, we got Mighty Men of Valor. We're going to eat. We're going to have fellowship. Listen, when you get saved, you can't go back to your old, old, your old stomping ground because y'all cause y'all not talking about the same stuff no more. We got brothers, men of God, whose desire is to love God, who don't always get it right every time. We're here to help one another. Amen. Nobody's nobody's perfect. No, no, we all we all know your stuff stinks. We're trying to help each other minimize the stink. Amen. We know it stinks, 
We're just trying to help each other minimize it. We know you got issues. You got struggles. You're dealing with kids. Some of you, some of you are at the, pl- at the place now you can tell those who are moving into teenage struggles how to, how to keep you from wearing, wearing orange for extended periods of time. You need that. You, you, need, you need somebody who's going. That's what the body, the body said, with the body fitly joined together. Every joint supplies a need. And I'm going to tell you, can, I, can, I, can, you hit, can you take this from a pastor? Everything you need ain't always spiritual. I said what I said. I said what I said. You, you need support. It ain't always spiritual. Help, 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 me, to, help me to quit quit punching holes in my walls. <laughs> Dude, quit punching holes. You paying for that. Find different outlets. Do something different. You need brothers. You need brothers to tell, let you. Know. You need. You need the men. The Bible says. Men, well, no, I was gonna say the Bible. Ain't the Bible? Is a nursery rhyme. I read too much word. I read too much word. It, listen. He must have read the. He said Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't but put Humpty back together again. I see God in that. Where you see what? Where, where the Lord in that, Pastor? It says all the kings. Hold. It didn't say the Humpty was the king, but he knew the king. Thank you for that one hand clap. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. You said, as brothers and sisters, as, as in this in this particular aspect, as men of God, we're the king's men. And if our brother has fallen and is broken. He needs the king's men to help him to put back together again. That's what brother, brother, with the body fitly drawn together, every joint supply need. You know, we have, I'm a, ladies, I'm going to give y'all just a little bit of game. We got brothers come, y'all, he say, pass, y- y'all, he don't say pass, he, say, he talk to the brothers. He say, y'all, I almost started drinking this, going back to drinking this week. We, got, we, got, we, had, we had them kind of conversations. We say our stuff is rated R because it's real. And that's some stuff, if you're not careful, will drive you back to the sin you said you would never go back to. And if you don't have brothers and sisters who can hold you up, who can stand alongside you, then you will, you will definitely go back to, that, to those same weak and regular ways because the devil loves to isolate you and then violate you. But you need brothers who come alongside and say, I, I'm not judging you. For where you are, I'm just trying to get you to where you're supposed to be. That's what that, that that's what church is supposed to be. That's what this is what I that's why I lo- I love this men's group because that's what we do. That's what we do. That's what we do. We challenge you. We challenge you because we we want you to do the same for us. Amen. Amen. So men's fellowship this Friday. This Friday is real real low key. You know, buffalo wings to do something. I don't know. We. Just, Chew on chicken bone or something. Mike, 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 Digger Mike, make the best corn cake. That's technically it's cornbread. But if you tasted Mike's cake, I mean cornbread, it's corn cake. Shoot. It hit the spot. It hit the spot. It, so it's, 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 it's getting cold. So we, he does a chili too. You put that corn cake with that chili. Jesus. I believe that's in heaven. It's, it's in heaven. You got it's a kiosk. It's a stand in heaven. Men's fellowship. Men's fellowship. Over the past nine weeks, past nine weeks, we've 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 uh, over nine weeks ago we started a series um, from the parable of the wheat and the tear, and we that was found in Matthew chapter thirteen, and it, it's it's about a, it's about a man who sows good seed in his field, and is seemingly the victim. Of, a, of sabotage when his enemy comes while men slept and sowed tares among his wheat. That was our, that was our basis foundation, Matthew 13, uh, for this series that we've been here over nine weeks. And there are times, there are times where, where things get planted in our lives that we did not sow. There are times in our lives where, where, we, where we are left to clean up a mess We did not create. The Bible says, he says, he sowed good seed. 
But while men slept, an enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. It's going to be some times we're going to have to clean up the mess that other folk made in our field. And it's how we respond in those moments that define the true essence and nature of our character. How you respond when somebody else breaks your stuff. How you respond will determine the essence of your character. Did you go back and bust out the windows in their car? Because they messed your stuff up? How did you, how you deal with that? The intent, the intent for, 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 for today is to close this series. The, tent, the intent is to close the series today. So let's see what God has to say about this. We're going to look at, we're looking at Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter, no, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, we're going to look at verses 1. Uh, and I'm going to be really, really teaching, uh, try to st- stay as close to, to uh, uh, exegete today as possible. Um, but we're going to see what the Lord has to say. And I'm going to tell you right now, we probably, this is probably going to be one more message. Amen. Mark chapter 4, verse 1 through 11. He says, I'm reading from the New American Standard Version, Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. When you got in there, say, "Uh uh-huh, oh, yeah. yeah. He says, he began to teach again by the sea, this is Jesus, and such a very large crowd gathered to him that he got into a boat in the sea and sat down. And the whole crowd was by the sea on the land, and he was teaching them many things in parables. Now, Parables are, they were, they were codes, they were stories, they, they were uh, 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 anecdotes. He didn't come right out and say what he was trying to say. He, he, he used parables. He's, he said it, but he didn't quite say it. He told them, but he didn't really tell them all of it. He did, he did this for a reason. And the disciples, the disciples asked him about that. He, 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 he was giving them parables, and, and he, he, he did it for a reason. Verse, uh, verse, verse uh, 4, he said, and, and was saying to them in his teaching, listen to this, verse 3. I'm sorry, verse 3. Uh, listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow. As he was sowing, some seed fell beside the ground, the road, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of soil. And after the sun had risen, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among the thorns and the thorns came up and choked it and it yielded no crop. Other seeds fell into the good soil. And and as they grew up and increased, they yielded a crop and produced 30 60 and a hundredfold. And as and, and he was saying, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. As soon as he was alone, his followers, um, along with the twelve, began asking him about the parables. And he said to them, him saying, and he was saying to them, You have to you has been given the mystery of the kingdom of God. But to those who are outside, Get everything in parables. Now, the sooner we get this, the sooner we get this right here, the word of the Lord is blessed. But the sooner we get this right here, the sooner we can assume our full position and authority as kingdom citizens. Buckle up. Hear what I'm saying. Salvation is free. But discipleship costs. Amen. I'm pausing for effect. Salvation is free, but discipleship costs. And the discipline to serve, that's my thought for this week, the discipline to serve opens us up to more of the kingdom of God than the decision to just surrender. Let it marinate for a minute. The decision to serve opens us up to more of the kingdom of God than just the decision or just the decision to surrender.
the discipline. I said decision, but it's the discipline to serve. It opens us up to more of the kingdom of God than just the decision to surrender. Why is this important? It's important because in the kingdom of God, I, me, you, us, we faithfully serve because we choose to. When you get to a place of serve, understanding you are, you, you're, you, you're serving, it's a place of you choose to do that. In the kingdom, as a, as a, as, as, as a, as a servant, I choose to serve. But in frustration, I surrender because somewhere I got caught. Think about it. Some of us didn't surrender because we wanted to. We surrendered because we got caught. Okay, y'all looking at me like y'all don't understand. God, if you get me out of this, I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. Lord, if you just, just let her not be pregnant. We surrendered, not because not we chose to. We surrendered because we got caught. Okay, we're going to be spiritual. Y'all going to act like that. Okay. Tell the truth. Our first encounter with God was to get me out of stuff. I surrendered because I was caught. I ain't had nowhere else to go. As you move into learning more about God, the discipline to serve comes because I choose to. I decide to surrender because I got caught. So, so, so the, the people that got the information, here's what Jesus is saying. The people that got the information were in the us crowd. He's letting you know right now, they're, get, they're saying, I'm giving them parables because they haven't been chosen discipline. They haven't chosen to follow me. They haven't made the choice to follow me. They're just coming along because I'm feeding them. I'm feeding them and I'm doing miracles. They like it. They're entertained. So they're hanging around. So I'm not giving them all the game because they're not pressing in. They're on the them side. He said, but he said, you've been given to you. You it's been given to know the mysteries to you. Talking about the 12 who, who laid down their old life and chosen to follow him. Discipleship. Who's who, 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 who denied themselves so they can get more of him. Discipleship, he said, to you, it's been given to know to you. You've got access to the mysteries of the kingdom. There are mysteries. There, there's their thing. Okay, okay, let me vote down your alley. You, you work for, you work for Booz Allen in Hamilton, but you don't have no key to the executive washroom. You're an employee at Booz Allen in Hamilton. But you don't have no parking space with your name on it. You walk into the same building that those who have the parking space and the key to the executive washroom go into. You probably move into the same beat meetings that they do. But because you're not given to executive level privilege, you don't get access to what executives do on executive level. Is that fair? Is that fair? It's, it's, it's the way it is. They pressed in. It cost. It cost. They got their MBA. They, they put some time in. They did, they did this, that, and the third. And you just coming in entry level. You was, you was in mail last week. And ain't nothing, wrong, ain't nothing wrong with that at all. But if you want the, the executive key to the washroom, if you want the name on your, then you got to press in. He said, he says to you, disciples, it's given to know the mysteries because you put the time in. You sacrificed this. You gave up that for more of me. He said to you, listen, I don't mind giving you game. But to them, all they want is, all they want is miracles and manna. 
Don't even know what it is. Manna literally means what is it? He says, he says, they asked him, why, why, you, why you keep telling them stories? Why you keep spoon feeding them, but you be giving us all this heart? He said, to you, it's, it's meant to know. You're supposed to know. You got access because of your, because of your discipline to serve. But to them who just, who only surrender when they get caught. They only call on me when they need me. To them, I got to speak on this elementary level. Oh. He says, he says th th there is a definite in the kingdom. There is a definite us and them. Salvation is free to everybody, but there's a definite us and them. Amen. Can I keep reading? Verse 12. That seeing they may see. And not perceive. He said, no, they're they going to look at it, look at the same thing you're looking at, but they're not going to see what you see. And hearing, they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? I'm going to read that verse 13 again. And he said unto them, know ye not this parable? If you don't get this, you can forget knowing anything else that come after this. If you miss, if you sleep on this, you're not going to understand anything that comes next. In other words, if you don't get this right here, nothing else I say next will make sense. That's what he says. Verse 14, the, the sower soweth the word. He's breaking it down now. The sower soweth the word. He's not talking to the crowd. He's talking to the 12. He said, the sower, I'm letting you know, I told them, the sower, I didn't tell them who the sower was. He said, the sower soweth the word. They thought it was seed. I'm telling you, the seed is the word. Verse 15. And these are they by the wayside where the word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And, Woo! This them the ones that run and shout and buck and froth and, and, and do the backstroke on the carpet, get carpet burned because they get so full. Okay. And have no root in themselves. See, the same ones that buck and shout but cuss you out in the parking lot. And so endure for a time afterward, when afflicted or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. They get the word, they get excited about it, they jump and they shout, oh God, thank you. But as soon as affliction come, immediately they are offended. See, we don't really know what we have until it's tested. You don't really know if it's, if it's a word from God until it's tested. Mm. You don't really know if this is what God, until it is tested. It's got to be tested. And until it is tested, until it is tested, you can get happy about it. Understand? Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Understand this. Any word you get has got to be tested. So you're wondering why, why am I going through this persecution when I leave church? Because you're getting word. And the enemy is trying to snatch it from you. Pluck it away from you because he understands if you get that word, I'm getting, I'm, I'm getting so far ahead of myself right now. If you get that word in your heart, you're going to be, a, you're gonna, you're gonna be a, a force to reckon with in hell. The devil ain't going to be able to hold you like he's been holding you. If you get that word in your heart, the Bible says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against it. If you get that word in your heart. The devil knows I can't touch him. I can't touch him right there. So he's trying to pluck that out. The reason why you're getting attacked is because of the word's sake. It's because of the word. Because he understands that word has its power to change your whole life. 
And if I let you get that word in your heart, if I let you start start meditating on that word, if I let you start mumbling and muttering that word over and over again in your heart, you see what, what the Bible says. He says he says uh, uh, in 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 in, uh, uh, in Proverbs, I think it's three five. He says, no, it's in Joshua. Meditate on the word day and night, and then you shall have good success. That word meditate literally means to mutter, to mutter, to Mumble. It, it, it gives a, it gives a connotation. That I'm going to give you a country term for those folks who country who, who who hadn't forgotten your country roots. You're not too citified to remember country stuff. There, there's something called cows chew their cud. You see, say, see, he's from Philly. He don't even know what, 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 what. <laughs> I didn't say cuz, they chew their cud. And the it, it's it's and they and they have two stomachs. Cows have two stomachs. They chew the, the grass till it becomes cud. That's why you see them all the time. They look they always chewing. Look at a cow, he always chewing. He, he always chewing. He chews the cud, swallows it in that first stomach, regurgitates it, swallows it again, it goes to the second stomach. He says, he's, and this meditate has that connotation. You got to keep chewing on the word, muttering it over and over and over and over again. He says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. Faith coming by you, you, you're filling your mind and your and your 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 heart with more word than anything else. See, listen, that's what the de the devil's doing a good job. He got us singing Uzi Vert and 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 Lil Yachty and all. I don't even know who out there no more. Ice Spice. He got us saying re rehearsing that, and we chewing that over and over and over again, and that ain't getting us nothing. But you, you keep chewing that word. You keep chewing that word. You got you 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 going in for a job interview. And they listen to their earpods. They listen. They listen. They listen to you know whoever it is out there that's hot right now. But you got you got that word, God. You said, "I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. My down sitting, up rising is blessed." You said, "Everywhere my feet trod." You said, "You're gonna give it to me, God." You said, "You said you said you. I've been young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread." God, I thank you. I thank you. For your word being manifest in my life. You get that stuff. You start re rehearsing that, rehearsing that, rehearsing that, rehearsing it over and over and over again. Chewing that cud over and over and over again. They, listen, if you get that thing in your heart, they got to have hire you. Thank you for them less than enthusiastic, less than enthusiastic hand clap. That's okay. You got you, you to gotta get it. You got, he says, that word has got to find a place in your heart. Oh, God, I'm getting way ahead of myself. I'm getting way ahead of myself. He says, here's what he's, he's telling them. He's giving them game. He says, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world, verse, verse 18, and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some hundredfold. Now, I need to park right here for a minute. If time allows me, we're going to go back to verse 35 from here, but i probably not going to do it. But I want to park right here. Last week I told you that, that this is a, this is a, we, we are a Bible-believing, spirit-filled Congregation, this 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 church, we 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 believe this book from Genesis to the maps. We believe it. We 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 don't omit or skip any pages in this book. We believe this to be the word of God. We believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. We we believe that if Jesus can do it. Uh, if I see it in his word, because he's my example, because he, he's the forerunner, we are, we, are, we are his, he's our big brother, and we're to do what he did as he was in the earth, so are we. If I'm believing this, I read this, if he did it, I believe we can do it. He's, because his word says that greater works than these shall ye do. It's kind of church you're in. We, if he said it, 
If he, then, then he's given me an example. Jesus didn't just leave a good message and an awesome book. He left us power. He left us power. Look at him and say, I got power. You got power. We, we do not have to put up with life the way it is. We've got power to change. I'm trying to tell you, you don't have to put up with life the way it's handed to you. As a kingdom citizen, you have the power to change. Now, he's saying, well, Papa, I don't know about that power. You ain't, you ain't been chewing your cud. If, that's, if that came to your mind, if a problem came to your mind, they say, I don't know about that, then you're not chewing your cud. You've been rehearsing the problem more than the promise. You've been chewing the problem more than the promise. We have power. This word is power. Listen to this. If, I, if, 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 if the situation don't change, then God changes me. Either way, something is changing. Okay, okay. See, the devil wants you just to lay down and take it. Turn, <laughs> no offense, Matt. The devil wants you to just to change your name to Matt and let the people walk all over you. Still my dude. Your name is Matthew. We call you Matt. The devil wants you just to lay down and take it. But as a kingdom citizen, you do like David. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Listen, you get you get triggered by somebody because somebody say something you don't like. Get triggered in the spirit. What'd you say? How many of y'all get triggered because somebody say something you don't like? But then in the spirit, you just let the devil just do whatever he want to do. I don't I don't have people walk out and they hear something and they and they, they just, what did you say? They, 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 they're ready to get active. But we lay down and take whatever the devil throws at us like we don't have a choice. If you got this word, you got power to change. Look at your other neighbors. I got power to change. If I don't change, it's got to change. Hallelujah. Give God praise for that if you believe it. Hey, God. So, so, so if, 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 if the room is where you call home, this is the kind of church you go to. I believe that if I, if, if, if I, if I pray, if I pray with you, I believe God's going to do something. Now, I don't know what he's going to do, but I, be, I believe my, if we agree as touching, Mm. The Bible says if two or three gather in my name as touching. Mm. You shall ask what you will. And it shall be done in my name. That's what his word says. And I, I, I have to come. I have to come believing that God, I don't know when you're going to do it. But I know you're going to do it. I don't know how you're going to do it. That's not my job. That's beyond my pay grade. He didn't ask me all that. He just said, he just said, believe, only believe. If, if that's, that's my role, then his word gives me power to stay there. His word gives me power to stand there because he's, he's shown me, he's given me examples in his word, how it's possible to do that, even in the face of opposition. Now, now, as we as we declare as we declare uh, that truth, we must we must we must. I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I need balance. I need balance. As we stand and declare that truth, we must understand that over the years we've allowed traditions, conducts, and practices into our ecosystems that have no power at all. While we know we have a book that is full of power that gives us access to power. We also have to recognize that we have allowed and given permission and clearance to things and, and practices uh, uh, that, that have no power at all, empty calories. If I do this, then God will bless you. If you do this, then God will bless you. 
I done been in the place. I ain't talking about nobody, but I done been in them places where they tell me, if you run around the church two times, then God will bless. Mm-hmm. Been there. Dance on top of your pocketbook. Dance on top of your wallet. Now I got to get a new wallet. God will heal you. Slap your neighbor. See, you're right now, see, you're talking about slapping me. God didn't say that. God didn't say slap me. God didn't say slap me. Don't, don't. Try Jesus. Don't try me. Don't, don't, don't. God didn't say slap your neighbor. Slap your neighbor. No, no, no. God will heal you if you spit in your neighbor's eye. No, no. no. Is he going to bail you out? Is he going to bail me out? for Empty, 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 hollow stuff, customs, practices that mean nothing. It makes good church. It makes for good church. Ooh, didn't we have a time as you wiping somebody's spits from your eye? Oh, didn't we have a time? That's a lie. You're just going home musty and offended. <laughs> Run around the church seven times. I'm just, I'm, what I'm saying, I'm, it, it, we've allowed these kind of practices and, and traditions and customs into our ecosystem that have no power. And again, I say it makes good church, but it doesn't do anything. It's good theater, but it ain't kingdom. Clap your hands like you got the devil between you. Like, that it? Clap your hands like you're clapping the devil's head off. That ain't, that ain't helping nothing. Now you got micro fractures in your hands. Tell the devil, I don't, I'm not talking to the devil. Why do I have to have a conversation with the devil? Why are you sanctioning the conversation? I don't need to talk to the devil. Common practices that we allow into our ecosystems that have no power. Makes good church, but does absolutely nothing. The power that God gives, the power that God has to bring us something is always packaged in a seed. He's always talking about seed. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sold seed. The kingdom, the kingdom of heaven is like, is like a seed being sown on this ground. And th- he's always talking about seed. He says as long as the earth remains, there's seed, time, and harvest. If God's going to bring us anything, he, he, it starts and it is packaged in a seed. Do you have faith the size of a mustard seed? It's, it's packaged in a seed. It's packaged in a seed. Most of us want the result. God heal me. That's the result, the end result. But then he give you seed. We got 66 bags of seed. God, I want to be healed. He said, go back to your seed book. Get word. The word is seed. The word is seed. He says, he said, you start, you start finding a word on healing. Sow that word as seed. And then you get the end result. We want God just he heal me. Heal me. We want somebody to do all the work. And God takes you back to the bag of seed. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. He says, go back to the seed. Go back to the book because the book is where you get seed. Anything you need in your life is found in the book of seed. Let's look at, I'm, I'm not going to be able to finish this. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 4. And I'm not, now you're going to try we're going we, we gonna, to we gonna finish, get, get back to this on Wednesday. Proverbs chapter 4. Y'all getting some out of this? Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 1. Proverbs chapter 4. Verse 1. 
Proverbs chapter 4. Now my hands hurt. I've been trying to bust the devil upside the head. Proverbs chapter 4. Look at verse 23. You got to say, uh-huh, oh yeah. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it, the heart, springs or flows the issues of life. Out of the heart, out of the heart flows the issues of life. He says, listen, I'm going to say something. It's going to mess you up. I know it. God help. The trouble in our life did not come from the devil. It came from my heart. Out of it, the heart flows the issues of life. Anything around you that's going on around you, it had to first be in you. Guard your heart. That's why he says guard your heart with all diligence for out of it. If it's around you, it had to come from somewhere. Where did it come from? Out of your heart. Out of it flows the issues of life. It ain't the devil that created what's around you. It's your heart. It's your heart. You put seed in and your heart produced that crop. I'm going to say this, you're going to hear this again, but I, I, need to, I want to say this right here as well, that every place, every place has, everything has its place. I said this Wednesday, the airport has its tarmac. The boat has the dock. The car has the, the garage or the carport. The seed has the soil. And the word of God has And he's saying, guard your heart. Because out of it flows the issues of life. If what's going on around you is, is not what you wanted or what you thought or what, what is not going well, then you have to look at what you put in your heart. You put something other than the word in your heart. I know that's, that may be hard for some people to swallow because you, you, you want so bad to be like Flip Wilson and say the devil made you do it. No, you put that in your heart. Can I tell you something? That's, okay, okay, I'm going to tell you. Tell you about me. Get off you because I smell barbecue, Chris. I smell flesh burning up in there right now. Tell you about me. Tell you about me. I can't watch. That, I recognize real early I could not watch... Um, what was the movie? Tay Diggs and Morris Chestnut. He, Morris Chestnut was getting married. Tay Diggs wrote the book. The Best Man. I can't watch that. I can't watch that. Because that scene where Morris was reading the book and he started seeing his fiance engaged with, her, with his friend, that messed my head up. Because you know what? That seed, the devil took that seed and said, Wonder what Al Mita was doing. Can I be honest with you? Can I tell you the truth? Can I? My head went. I said, "No, I can't watch this no more." Mm -mm. But you know why? You know why that happened? Because I let that get in my heart. That movie was a seed. That scene was a seed. It got in my heart. And I know my wife loves me. My, listen, I know my wife. My wife, if you come, in, you come after me, my wife will stab you with a rusty spoon. Say, get away, get away. I know she loves me. But that seed was planted in my heart, Chris. And I, 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 had, to, I had to flush that out. How would I flush it out? Word. Word. I'm going to tell you. And that, that, that kind of seed latches on to the weakness in you. That kind of seed latches on to the weakness that's in you. I know she's fine. I know I outkick my coverage. I outkick my coverage. This girl is fine. I know it. 
I know by myself, I couldn't have pulled that. I mean, I know I got that Denzel Will Smith hybrid. I know that in the right look, is it Denzel? Is it is Winzel? Is Willzel? That's what it is. Big Willie Denzel. I know, but that ain't enough to pull this. I mean, she is fine. Beautiful inside and out. I know. And so, so that scene lets to the weakness of my insecurity. Can y'all, can y'all take y'all pastor just sharing just a little bit? Y'all know I, I don't do this. I'm, I'm introvert. I, I don't like nobody knowing my business, but the Lord said, tell y'all. I'm, I ain't liking this at all. But that seed, ungodly seed, latched on to the weakness in me. And the thing about that, it grows exponentially. It grows. You know, bamboo can be planted for five, six years. But when it starts growing, it'll grow like a foot a day. That's what, that's, that's what this seed, that ungodly seed, when it attaches to the weakness in you, it'll grow like crazy. And so I had, I had to, I had to combat it with word seed. He will keep thee in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Can, can, can I get you to be honest with yourself the next time you know, you, you know some, something you can't handle? Just walk away from it. No, nobody gets an award. I'm tough. I can take it. No, you can't. It's not a strong man who can endure stuff he can't handle. It's a strong man who recognizes or a strong woman who recognizes, you know, this is not, I'm not strong enough for this yet. And walk away. He says, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. It's not the devil. It's what you allow in your heart. It's what you allow in your heart. And this is what we have to guard. We got alarm systems on our cars. We got ring and doorbell cameras on our houses. But our hearts are wide open. Our hearts are wide open. You don't, you don't guard a city at your door. In the Old Testament, they had walls and gates. And they had guards at the gate, not at your door. By the time the enemy comes to your door, it's too late. You guard the city of your soul at the gate. Ooh, this is good. Can I join this church? Can I join? You join you you guard the the city of your soul. That's ha. Huh. Your mind, your will, your emotions. That's that's your soul. You guard the city of your soul at the gate. Okay? I'm gonna tell you this and then I'm gonna go. Ante, come on quick, because if, if if you don't, I'm gonna keep going. I gotta stop. What are the gates? And this is the gate too. Whatever you take in, whatever you're looking at, look at your neighbor. What are you asking? What are you looking at? Don't you better not say nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't say nothing. What are you watching? What are you watching? What are you taking in? That determines whether or not. You guarding? Are you guarding the gate of, of what you're seeing? My wife taught me something real, real, real strong, real powerful. It was subtle, but it's powerful. I like my crime shows. Law and Order, SVU, NCIS. I can't watch Criminal Minds. That's too go too deep. It's go too deep. It messes. I can't do that. NCIS, New Orleans. L.A., Miami. <laughs> I 
I love all them shows. I love all of them. I watch them. Scorpion. That's my stuff. My wife says, she says, can you, can you go downstairs and watch that? I got offended, Dave. This is my band, too. Kenneth, I got, a, I, got, I got offended. Can you go downstairs? Oh, now. You too good? And what she's saying is, I can't go to sleep with that on my spirit. guard because here's what's that if I go to sleep on that I'm thinking about law and order I'm thinking about NCIS I'm thinking about about Dwayne Pride getting shot I'm thinking about Gibbs doing whatever I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about whatever you, you you gotta guard the gate what are you watching what are you listening to what are you listening to What do you? What? I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not listening. To nothing direct. But you. What do you? You ear hustle. You listen to other conversations, and they're not holy. They're not godly. You're listening to homegirls and homeboys who 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 don't have a kingdom view tell you what to do. You you letting Sha, Shaquisha, who ain't got a man, tell you how to ha, how to deal with your man. You let Ray Ray them who still out there on the block. Still wearing do-rags. Don't nobody wear do-rags no more. Still wearing do-rags. Who don't have, who still living with their mama. Tell you how to handle how you should deal with the stuff that you have. What are you listening to? What are you listening to? What are you taking into your ears? What is, what is it that, that you're, you're processing? If you don't guard your gates, if you don't guard your gates to the city of your soul, your soul will be invaded and you begin, you'll begin to doubt this and believe what everybody else is saying. But my Bible asks the question, and I'm going to ask it of you, whose report... Think about it. I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to leave you alone. Do you spend as much time in your word as you do listening to everybody else? Do you spend as much time reading your Bible as you do on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok? How much scripture have you memorized and committed to your to your heart as opposed to the new TikTok dance you learned? Or the, the, the little voiceover that you learned? It's real cute. It's real fun, but that ain't gonna save you when you come under attack. You can But when the devil fights you, he ain't gonna, he not going to challenge you to no dance off. And listen, I'm not saying you can't do none of that. I'm not saying I'm not saying you can't do that. But it it ought to pale in comparison to your time in the word. It ought to that that stuff ought to pale in comparison to how much time you spend with God. That's all I'm saying. I don't want you walking around stuffy. You can't do nothing. Because that's not liberty. Remember I told you, discipleship is what I, choo I choose to serve. God doesn't want you to be drones and, 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 and mindless robots. But I'm gar I, guarantee, I guarantee you, you spend time in this word, it's going to make you want to know him better. It's going to make you want to speak closer to him than you've ever been before. Hey, everybody standing. You got power. 
I venture to say, you got more power than you know you have. And the devil's hoping he can keep you that way. He's hoping he can keep you at a place to where you are. Unaware that you're able right now to shut every one of his operations in your life down today. If you just access that power, just walk in that authority. If you just walk in that authority. He says, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. That's what he says. His word, I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. You're not going to get it just having proximity with God. You got to have his presence. Father, we thank you for the power. We thank you for the authority. We thank you for the access into the mysteries of the kingdom. We thank you, God, that salvation is free, but discipleship requires a sacrifice. And Lord, my, my sacrifice might not be the sacrifice of my brother and my sister, but we all are required to sacrifice. It costs us something. Let our desire for more of you outweigh what the devil's trying to convince us is too much for us to pay. Let our desire, our hunger, our thirst for you outweigh the threat that the enemy is convincing us with. And if we do this, we'll lose who we are. God, we want to be lost in you. To the degree that when, wherever we walk, people see you before they see us. We want to be lost in you. To the degree, God, that wherever we move, God, no one sees us before they see you. We want to be lost in you. To the degree that when the enemy attacks, he got to meet you first. And God, if he should come nigh our dwelling, we know that you gave him permission, which means you know we already have what it takes to overcome, outdo, and outlast every attack that he has for us. For you said greater works than these shall we do. You also said that greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. We thank you, God, for the power not to flaunt or lavish on ourselves, but the power to move in and out of spheres. <sighs> that the current system has said we could not move in and out of. We thank you for making us ambassadors. Ambassadors of and to the kingdom of heaven. Like any ambassador who's on foreign soil, he's been given certain diplomatic immunities. So God, we thank you that while we're representatives of the kingdom of heaven in the earth, because of who we answer to, We may be subjected to a thing, but we're not necessarily subject to it. We may be subjected to sickness, but we're not subject to it. Because by your stripes, we were healed. We may be subjected to seasons of lack and poverty, but... Your word says we've been, we were young and now we're old and we've not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. We thank you. It may be, we may be subjected to it, but we're not subject to it. It's 
not double speak. It may come our way, but it won't take us away. Woo, God, it may come our way, but it won't take us away in the name of Jesus. Seal this word in our hearts today. Enabling us, strengthening us to leave here better than we were before we came. In the name of your son, Jesus, the Christ, whose name is above all names, we pray. I need every son, every daughter of the Most High King to give him the best praise you got. Amen. Come on, come on. Just a few more moments. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory to God. You're worthy. You're worthy. Does anybody here, you're not saved? Today's a good day to get saved. Doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, how long you've been there, who you've been doing it with. God says, I love you with an everlasting love. To, all, to those who are watching us, uh, Online, we thank God for you being here. Thank you for being here. Pray something was said to bless you. There's a video that's going to come after this. If you don't know Christ, pray that prayer with the person on the video. Accept Christ. Listen, I'm saying accept him. Don't try him because a trier will quit when they get home. Masters, accept him. Receive him as Lord and Savior. And let somebody know you got saved. Now, Come in close. Come in close. Look at my face. If you in Manassas and you're not sick and you're not at a place where you can't get out, you go in and out to the store any way you want to and you choose to sit at Dead South Baptist, you need to get your hand parts up and get to somebody's church. I'm not saying you need to come here because this might not be the church for you. But you need to get to somebody's church. I said what I said. You know, you know better. Do better. See you next week. Is anybody here? Hey, I hope you enjoyed that message. If this is something, the message that you heard, if it touched your heart, if it has changed your life today, and you're at a place right now in your life where you say, I haven't given my life over to the Lord. I haven't invited him into my heart. Today is a great day to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray. It's the prayer of salvation. It's inviting the Lord into your heart. The Bible says that those who believe in their hearts and confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord and was raised from the dead, you will be saved. So I'm just going to pray and repeat after me if this is a decision you would like to make today. God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. I believe that he was raised from the dead and that he is my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. It is that simple. It is that simple. Your next step is, is to drop a comment down below and say, I prayed. And we'll get someone connected with you and we'll get you started on your journey. I hope you have a great day.